Hello everyone, Tasty Waffle here. Today I'll be reviewing Kurosawa's sixth film, One Wonderful Sunday, released in 1947. So let's begin with the plot. The basic outline of the plot is pretty simple. There's this couple uh, in Tokyo. This is post-war Japan. They have 35 yen and they're trying to spend a Sunday together and have a good time. And it's rather difficult in the post-war climate of Japan. Now, that part of the story is pretty straightforward. But there are other elements of the plot that really don't work. I will say the first 40 minutes of this film are amazing. But there are some moments in there which I wish they had expanded upon. There's a scene where the man, Yuzo, is mistaken for a Yakuza or a gangster at a nightclub. That was a very interesting scene, but I feel that they could have expanded upon that. But it really just appears there in the beginning of the film and is never mentioned again. And there are other elements such as Yuzo and Misako trying to buy a house and other moments where it would have been nice to see that story uh, come full circle. But they mention it near the beginning several plot threads, but they're never resolved. Therefore, I feel that the plot here ends up being rather flimsy, and there are problems with the pacing. There's a scene near the middle where they've tried to have a good day, but everything's gone wrong, and they have like an emotional breakdown. But that scene lasts 20 minutes. They could have finished that scene in five minutes. And also at the end, they've been trying to go to a concert of Franz Schubert's unfinished symphony, but it didn't work out. So they have an imaginary concert where Yuzo pretends to conduct the orchestra. But that scene lasts about 15 minutes. And yet again, like the sequence in the middle, it could have been summed up in five. So therefore the plot really has some problems because of the pacing and unfinished story threads. So I have to give it a two out of five. Let's move on to the characters. <clears throat> this is a small cast. It's Misako and Yuzo. Both characters are well acted, but I feel that Yuzo is the most interesting character of the two. Because when we first meet him, he's kind of a stick in the mud and kind of maybe a little bit of a jerk. But we see through the course of the story that he ends up being multidimensional. Misako is not quite so well played. I think it may have to do with the writing. Her character is underwritten. Now, one of the problems Kurosawa had repeatedly through his film career was writing roles for women. And this is a not well-written role, and I think he really only has two, um, Yukie from No Regrets From Our Youth and Lady Kaide from Ron, are, for me, the only two interesting female characters Kurosawa created in his entire career. And Misako just ends up being She's long-suffering, she tries to be optimistic, but she is a bit petulant and a bit of a crybaby, and she doesn't really change over the course of the film, unlike Yuzo, who changes. Uh, there are other minor characters that are of interest, but because of the unfinished story threads, they don't get enough time. Therefore, I have to give the characters a 2 out of 5. Let's move on to the script. <coughs> Like I said, there's problems with the characterizations and problems with the unfinished story threads, which really come down to a result of the writing. There are some interesting ideas presented here, but some ideas, uh, such as the being mistaken for a Yakuza, that scene, we don't really see a payoff to that story thread. So, to sum it all up, I have to give the script a 3 out of 5. Let's move on to the depth. It's interesting how this film is actually a metaphor for post-war Japan. This is sort of the story of two people who are rather downtrodden, very much like the entire nation was at the end of the war. And it's the story of how they try to have a resurgence, try to feel better, try to enjoy their lives. And they ultimately do. And I think it's a metaphor for the Japanese resurgence after their defeat in World War II. 
Um, so that's a very welcome idea. Uh, Yuzo is an interesting character because he had some depth. We see he's many, has many layers. He's multifaceted, and that's great. Um, but unfortunately, because of the problems with the film, some of the ideas don't get explored as well as they could. So I have to give the depth a 3 out of 5. Let's move on to the music. The music here is fantastic. Uh, the film uses Schubert's Unfinished Symphony as part of the music, as well as a nice little variation in one part of the film on Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, and also uses the Torre Ador March from Georges Bizet's opera Carmen. There is some great use of music here. Kurosawa is a master of using music to really uplift his films, and he does it again here. So I have to give the music a 5 out of 5. And last but not least, let's look at the spectacle. Yet again, Kurosawa demonstrates his brilliant cinematography, his brilliant use of movement, the movement of individuals, the movement of the weather, the movement of the camera, and he demonstrates those skills to perfection. The only problem with this film are the background shots. There are some very fake looking facades in the background which ends up which end up being distracting. And that's really the only problem with the spectacle. Otherwise it looks great. But those really fake looking backgrounds detract from the experience. So I have to give the spectacle a four out of five. Well, when you total it all up, it comes to a 19 out of 30. I would not necessarily recommend this film, unless you are interested in seeing all of Kurosawa's works. It's a very quaint film. It's a nice film. It's, it's uplifting in terms of a, sort of the, just the feeling the movie gives. It's very positive. And so I have to say it's a good film, but not a great film. Well, that's my review. One Wonderful Sunday. Tune in next time to hear my review of his 1948 masterpiece, Drunken Angel. Thanks for watching. Bye.